Hey, Carla. Hi, I realized I was on mute. <laughs> <laughs> Problem. All right, looks like everybody's starting to join in. Give it another couple of minutes and then we'll get things started. Thanks everyone for joining us today uh, for our webinar about Google My Business. And um, yeah, we'll give it until 12.01. <laughs> and then uh, we'll get started with a, an overview. Um, this is Carla Plains. She's my uh, account manager at Compete Now. And um, she does a great job and she's been, she put together this presentation today and we'll be going through it together and talking through it. She's also been optimizing some, some pages most recently through Google My Business. Hopefully we can offer up some useful information that you can immediately end the webinar and go and, and implement for your own business. So just as a um, as an overview, now that we're at 1201, we're gonna, gonna talk about Google My Business today. Some people that are in this webinar or watching the recorded eventually webinar that we're going over now might know what that is. So it might just be a little bit uh, redundant information, but we'll get through it quickly. And then we'll talk a little bit more about what can you do with your uh, Google Business page once you've claimed it that can make it a little bit better and, and maybe increases the chances that people are actually gonna find it. Um, so just as a quick run through, I, I'll show you just what the Google Business pages are. Um, starting the presentation, uh, I'll show the slide and then I'll probably drag my window over to uh, show it. And then all along the way, um, there is a little Q&A icon if you wanna ask questions or just chat in your questions. I'm gonna to try to watch them a little bit during the, the presentation or we'll just go through them all at the end, but please feel free to add in um, Q&A questions in either the chat or the Q&A feature through Zoom if you know how to do that, but either way is fine with us. All right, so <clears throat> I should share my screen actually before I start going through it. So here's the title. What is Google and business? How can I leverage it to increase sales? Um, talked a little bit already about the presentation overview and goals. Um, for us, for my company, um, Google My Business has been a great way to, to generate more online leads uh, for local searches. Um, this is where you can see the Google, when we talk about Google My Business, we're really talking about the maps listings that pop up when you do a local search. So in this case, we did Web Design Beverly MA. Uh, that is where I'm, our office is located that we used to go work at. Um, and it is at the Cumming Center. So if somebody searches Web Design Beverly MA, you can see that our listing is showing up first in the map results. Um, and it's free, which is, um, you know, you don't hear it too often nowadays, especially with um, how expensive different um, means of marketing are nowadays, especially depending on your industry. Whereas with web design, it's, a, it's very expensive to do different marketing programs. So this is definitely the effort we put into this has yielded some great results for us, um, partly, and we'll get into the tips as we go on, but big, big thing for us was getting those reviews. Um, you can see we have five stars, 28 reviews when the screenshot was taken, we're up to about 31 now. So it's definitely uh, can really have a, a big impact on your business and your ability to um, actually get some SEO results through your site. We all know and many companies have tried SEO with other firms and they pay hundreds or even thousands of dollars a month to get their websites on the first page of Google. But realistically, when you do a Google search, those organic listings are not so prominent anymore. So when I do a search, we'll just say, um, you know, roofing contractor near me as just a real little quick baseline search. You can see what we have is we have the Google, Google local service ads at the top. And then you have a Google, and then you have another regular kind of Google ad. And then you have the Google Maps, which is what we're talking about today for the Google My Business. And then you're getting into the organic listing. So this is what SEO companies are paid to do. But you can see, even on my really large screen, you're pretty far below the folds before you're even getting into a lot of those um, search results. And then when you look at the search results to even get in that area, you're talking about an SEO company 
having to somehow get you ranked over Angie's List and Home Advisor, which they're probably not going to be able to do. You got one actual company, it looks like, listening here. That now we're into BBB.org, Better Business Bureau, Thumbtack, Yellow, all these national players. So just highlighting the importance of Google My Business in terms of SEO as it relates to um, local small businesses and kind of being realistic about how, if you're trying to get on page one and you don't have thousands and thousands of dollars to spend um, or, or have a writing team that's doing it, Google My Business is more, is more or less for a lot of, lot of companies the more, most realistic way to get into that, that first page exposure and uh, business. So that's a little bit about what Google, biz, Google My Business is and um, you know how it can benefit you and a little bit back on onto the, um, the goals. So going into the next slide, we talked a little bit why it's important. I definitely have been, for me and, and lead generation standpoint, we already talked about the importance of it for uh, local small, for SEO for local small businesses. But aside from that, people really use it for a lot of different things related to your business. So they, you need to make sure your hours are up to date on Google. Um, a lot of the times people are using Google uh, to reference hours and contact information, when, whether it be your menu or whether it be your um, anything, your phone number. So you need to make sure your information is up to date there. Um, I've had plenty of experiences where I've gone to a restaurant or done something like that and their hours said they were open and I showed up and they were closed be, just because the information on Google is out of date. Um, you know, so that is technically a user error. Technically you should go to the website and always check the hours there, but a lot of people don't always do that. So you definitely want to make sure your information's up to date on Google in that way. And also just um, that being said, since you know that a lot of people are using your listing for basic, basic information, like seeing your reviews or seeing your phone number or your hours, it's a great opportunity to get your offers, um, sales, additional information that you know, if they're not clicking through to the website, which it still drives a lot of website traffic, don't get me wrong. But for those people that are just perusing Google business pages and just looking at the information there, you want it to be up to date. Um, and uh, they even added nowadays, they even add a little section for COVID-19 updates. So when you go into your Google business page, you can post a little update saying like, oh, yes, we're, we're we are open and running as usual, and here are the, the guidelines we're following, and that's another good update to post. Um, the screenshot is actually a pretty interesting example because you can see how um, the Grubhub ad is getting in on Mike's Pastry, so and also on the ordering. So that, that is something that you could potentially control a little bit more if, if it was an actively managed um, at listing. All right, so helps help searches reach you. This is just another screenshot of our own listing. You can see how the hours pull in, the phone number pulls in, and the address. So that's very helpful. You can also add photos. That's Carla's going to get a little bit more into the tips in terms of the things that you can do to um, improve and enhance your listing. Um, you know, now we'll talk a little bit about how to set up your uh, Google My Business. And um, this was partly why I wanted to do the webinar is because a lot of a lot of the customers that I talk to and clients I talk to don't even know where to start. First, they're like, what is Google My Business? And then you say, it's the maps. And then everybody gets it. Um, so then what you need to do next, um, I, thought I, I thought this webinar could help with offering some advice on little challenges that I've run into in the past and things to kind of work through when you try to do it. First off, if you do you qualify? Um, do you own a business? Yes, you qualify. Can you meet in person during the stated business hours? Um, yes. But in person, meaning there are ways that you can have your Google business page and not actually display an address. So that's where a lot of our smaller clients that don't have physical business locations get stuck. Or if they're a service provider and you know, you're know you a contractor and nobody comes to you, you go to them. So you can actually set a service area. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, it's not really that useful for an e-commerce site that serves the whole country because you know, you're know you trying to sell to, the, to a huge, um, amount of people versus like really being worried about your direct surrounding um, SEO for the most part. And if you don't own the business, then you know, you're not supposed to be the one quali uh, qualifying and, and claiming the page. 
you technically can still try it if you can verify it. But um, there's been way too many times that I've seen um, past employees have access to the business page and then the actual business doesn't have um, access to it. So definitely a best practice to claim these pages through the owner's Google account. And you will need a Google account to do that. So to get started, you go to Google and visit Google My Business and search for your... All right. I'm not sure, Carla, where, where I was cut off. Carla, can you hear me? All right, Google Web Service doesn't appear to take in. Carla, can you hear me now? All right, I'm gonna send a message to the group so I can see. All right, can you hear me now? All right, one of these days we're gonna do a webinar without this happening. Um, so where did I get let, cut off? What I, was I on the Google business page? Um, yeah, you're talking about getting started. All right, so this is the place to start on google.com slash my business. So was this the last thing that everyone saw? I think so. more, more or less. All right. Yeah. So um, when you go to this page, you want to have a Google account ready. If you haven't claimed your business already, uh, just click manage. Uh, the easiest way to find your business, you'll then have to sign in, is to search for it. So I think what I'll do is um, I'll sign in on my other screen here. Next. share it well we'll bog everybody down we already lost a little bit of time but basically you search for your business and if it's claimed already by you hopefully then you'll just access it and manage it if not you can claim it and then there's some verification steps that are next um, when it comes to the verification sometimes they'll let you do a phone call and then they'll dial the phone number for the business that's on the listing and then you'll just type in the information that's really one of the only ways that'll work. I haven't seen email as one. The other one is more so a postcard. So if you're going to get a, um, if you're going to, that's basically they'll mail a postcard to the business uh, address to verify. And you'll have to look out for that and type in the address. Any changes you do the listing before it's verified are, are probably not going to take and, um, or they'll have to be reviewed. And then it's, a, you're not really sure when they're actually going to get processed. And um, you can also do this with multiple locations. So part, you can get some good SEO for different locations. If you have different offices, you would wanna set up a different Google business page for each of those offices so that you can show up locally for each of those. Like if you're a restaurant or something like that. And um, if you're a, a type of service that doesn't really have people come to you, you go to them. Then what you can do is you can select to hide your actual address on, from on Google and then just pick the service area that you, you work within. And that's pretty easy to do as well. All right, let's see. So using the Google My Business. So this, I think we're gonna get into the best practices now with Carla. So I'm just gonna go through a few questions that popped up before we do that. Uh, since it's a little bit different of a, of a topic. Let me bring this window over here so I can actually see these chats. So Eddie asks, what does SEO stand for? Sorry, Eddie. <laughs> uh, so S SEO stands for search engine optimization, which is uh, basically just getting more people to visit your website from Google. Um, so that's really what that is all about. Um, most frequently when people talk about SEO, they're talking about your, your ranking on Google, if somebody's Googling something, where is your re website coming up and falling on? So that's what that is. And I think there was one other question here. Uh, somebody submitted a change to Google description last week, doesn't appear to have taken. How do you know it's approved? Um, there ha it has been with the verifications, there seems to be a little bit more lag time uh, because of COVID. Um, but typically that hasn't really been as bad like as it was for the first three months of COVID. Uh, when I've made changes, they take pretty quickly. So I would just keep checking on it. And if it doesn't get approved soon, I would resubmit it and try to get it to push through. And there actually is a Google My Business support phone number. Um, 
<clears throat> they hid it for a while because they didn't they couldn't staff it. But um, if worst case, they have been actually helpful when you can when you can call them. So let me see if it's on here again. Yeah, they're still kind of hiding it. So there is a way you can submit a support ticket as well. Um, and I would recommend doing that if it still doesn't take because there was a while there where like nothing was getting updated in the Google My Business because they were just so understaffed. But um, I think they're past that now because I have been able to make um, updates to it without a problem. Uh, and Andy asked, I think I answered that question on another one, but yes, Andy, you can you can um, have a business listing and not show a physical address. That That's right within the, in the settings and a little checkbox where you can hide it. And um, another person asks, what about if you have a national e-commerce uh, and storefront? <laughs> so it's not, Google My Business probably isn't the best. Um, you still want a Google My Business page just because Google does use that information on the Google business page to kind of like verify and, and guess it can, I think, I do believe it will give you a little bit of an SEO boost because they, they kind of Google's a little bit more, okay, this is the, what this company is. This is the category they picked to be under on Google. And that's what we should try to rank this website for um, when even on national searches, but it's definitely not nearly as much of a benefit for, to a national business uh, e-commerce as it would be to just a local service provider or a local store or restaurant. Um, so that's that's really the the main thing. So I'm going to let I'm going to come back to the questions more so at the end and let Carla do do her part of the presentation. So Carla, just let me know when you want me to. To, to, to slide, I should say, and hopefully, hopefully we can, Zoom doesn't uh, disconnect us. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so now we're going to be talking about some of the ways that you can really take advantage of Google My Business um, once you get started. So it's important to add plenty of information and media um, to your listing as soon as it's made. So you can add a business category, the date that you first opened, your hours, and you can add attributes like free Wi-Fi, handicap accessibility, and free parking, um, and your phone number and website URL, of course. And um, when adding these categories and attributes, it's good to think about your SEO keyword strategy. So consider what keywords you're trying to rank for for your website and make sure you add those to the listing because those will also help your listing show up for terms related to your site. Um, and finally, we recommend getting the app for Google My Business. It's actually really helpful because you can um, change your business hours information and post status and pictures and see how you're doing with search results. And um, having the app will probably or it does help people to actually stay on top of making those updates and keeping all the information fresh because it's very convenient to just go in there and make updates. Um, so moving on to the next slide. Um, as Donato was mentioning earlier, adding a lot of photos is really important to your listing. Google has actually even said that businesses with photos receive about 42% more requests for driving directions to their location and about 35% more clicks to their website. Um, than businesses that don't have photos on their listing. So it's good to go above and beyond when adding these photos and make sure that the photos are fresh so that you can engage viewers. Um, and you can also have photos that you've been tagged in by customers, which shows that you're engaged with your customers. Um, and it's also recommended to post often because you can include information and pictures about uh, new listings and off or new offerings and services that you have. Um, and Google posts, like the posts on your listing, disappear after like seven days. So having fresh posts all the time will keep your audience engaged. Um, and then for reviews, it's important to engage in your reviews um, because you'll encourage future people to leave reviews and um, not only responding to positive reviews to say thank you and we appreciate your feedback, but also you can respond to questions that people might have and respond proactively to negative reviewers. About 45% of people say that they're more likely to visit a company with negative reviews if the owner or someone who works there has actually responded to those reviews. So getting a bad review isn't necessarily the end of the world. It's more about how you deal with that review. Um, and you can also use the Google My Business app that I was talking about to respond to these reviews. 
uh, which makes it much e easier to keep up with it because it can be hard to, you know, keep up to date with all of that. Um, and then for the next slide, um, you can learn a lot about your customers through your Google My Business results. So um, you can use the metrics to see how your business is doing over time as a result of um, the listing. So you can learn about how customers find your listing. So you can see if they're actually searching directly for the name of your business or if they're just searching for your business's category. Like if you're a bakery, were they searching for bakery in Boston or were they searching for the name of your bakery, for example. Um, and you can see where customers found you, whether it was on Google Maps or through Google searches. Um, and you can see what customers did after seeing your listing. So you can see if they visited your site, asked for direction, gave you a call or look for your photos. So I can kind of tell you which part of your listing is the most interesting or like for your specific company or industry, what people are most interested in seeing or doing. Yeah. Um, and with the phone calls, um, you can also get information such as how many calls you receive from your listing and which area codes those calls are coming from. Donato, did you want to add something? I'm um, yeah. just giving a little bit of a, uh, just while you're going through it, a little shot of like, um, you know, the insights that you can see through the Google My Business backend. So you can see like these are kind of like some of the terms that we're showing up, our business is coming up in those maps results for. Um, compete is one, but then you have web design, best web design. Um, you, can, you can see a relevant view of like, what are these people Googling that's having my website show up? And then you can say, well, based on all this information, maybe I'll tweak some wording in my listing to match it up better with what these searches are actually, how they're worded when you're uh, messing with your information. And then also just within the info area, this is just how you can see where you can go and, and edit everything really easily and change your service area and also tweak your hours and things like that. So there's, there's so many things you can do uh, to further increase the page, but I just wanted to give a little screenshot of um, some of the information. I think if I go to the home, it gives you more information about performance. So you can see, you know, the map showed up 300, my listing showed up 358 times, 304 searches. And then it gives you a little bit more details about, you know, what, what people are doing when they're uh, looking at those. So if I look at the searches, um, 47 were searching for my name specifically. And then these ones were more searching by just related keywords. So I just want to give an idea of like this little nice little analytics area that's built into the dashboard once you claim your page. Definitely. Right. Uh, and did you want to add in, I had one other thing I was going to share. Did you want to add on anything else? No, that was my last point about that. Okay. I loved your stats. I didn't know that those that even photos would make 40%, 47% difference in getting clicked through. That's pretty amazing. So, so, yeah. so, in a, so basically that's definitely <laughs> makes it worth the while to go in there and do that. I just wanted to sh give a quick little show of, the reviews for us were the biggest thing to actually start getting some results from Google My Business. And the way that you can do that is by asking people for them. Um, I'm not typically in a business that people just write online reviews for. It's definitely more restaurant driven or retail driven. So typically for a, a B2B like me, you have to ask for them. So what I did was, and a lot of people do, is you go to your own page, you Google yourself, you see your page. And then you can go down and you can click write review. And that will bring up this little pop up box. And it makes it very easy to take the URL out of the address bar and you'll run it through some kind of link shortening tool. And then that's something you can email or have in your email signature or do some kind of campaign. But getting more and more of those reviews will definitely have a huge impact on on your placement. And just by getting that whenever somebody clicks that link, most of them have a Google account. When they click it, it'll automatically pop, do a nice little pop-up box where they can click the stars and write a quick review and then, and then you're done. And the reviews that they write also um, factor in for the keywords. So if somebody wrote a review for me and said, yeah, you're a great web design company, da, 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 like I get that good review, the positive review bump, plus I get the keyword within the review itself. So it's definitely completely worth um, trying to generate those reviews. All right, so that's that. So I'm gonna leave this 
up here and then we'll start going through some of the questions that came in. Let's see one in the Q&A area. What do you do with no address? Yeah, so if you have no address, you, um, we answered that one. You can, um, you can just say that you service customers at their address and then you put in your service area and then no address will actually show. Um, I think the only downside to that is it'll show you like the town you're located in, but the problem, the only problem with that is like the Google maps are probably more likely to show up um, listings that have an address showing so that they could say like, here's this company that's two miles away from your location. Um, so that's the only kind of like downside to not having it. But if you actually, if you absolutely can't have an address showing, then you still want to do a Google business page. You just might not get as much exposure as you would if you could show an address on it. All right, another question. When you do this, how do you track things being searched? So that's where you'll be able to see that. Um, once you set it up, you can go into your dashboard and then you can see that list of search, search, search phrases. Um, See, I'm still signed into mine. So for me, I'll go to insights. And this one was from Tom, you go to insights, and then you go to queries used to find your business. And then you get a nice little list of um, how people are finding finding you. Oh, and if I keep scrolling, you can see even more graphs where customers view your business, uh, customer actions, visits to your site, call you how many clicks to call directions requests how many calls you've gotten in the week from people clicking it, how many views your photos are getting. So it's pretty, pretty cool, uh, the amount of information that you can see. Um, expectations for once it's set up. Um, hard to say, depends on the business. Um, if, you're, if it's a brand new page that you're just setting up, I wouldn't expect hardly anything from it. You probably would have to set it up and really um, beef up the page and get all the information in there and then get a bunch of reviews um, because the history is a big part of what's going to help have these um, show up in the listings. So let me see, Boston. So like I'm not going to show up for this one in my map because I'm in Beverly, but just to give an example, you know, like these ones that are showing up at the top right now are more so older listings that have been there and then what you probably will happen is when you set up your listing to start you'll be much more towards the bottom until you can work your way up through um, active reviews postings and some of the best practice things that we've been talking about today um, there's a way to add testimonials people have given you manually to make them google reviews so they wouldn't be google reviews if you added them manually but um I, I think there's a way you could probably get some testimonials in with your services. So when you go to services, you can add different services and then that's where you can, you can add in more text and maybe even paste in some of your past uh, reviews. Um, if I were you though, Andy, I would go to your past clients and just ask them, Hey, you know, I'm trying to build up my online Google presence. Um, thank you for your past testimonial. Would you mind clicking this link that I showed you how you get that and writing us a quick review on Google would really help our business. So that's how I would go about doing that. And that's what, and then when you're asking for future reviews, asking for the Google reviews definitely has a lot more value because, um, you know, it's nice that they say those nice things, but it doesn't help you really at all um, when it comes to Google and online search and things like that. Um, dealing with negative reviews. So if you do have negative reviews, um, you are gonna to need to respond to them, hopefully get them to update or remove the review. But if not, just making a very, just making a public um, response and that other people can read and understand that you tried to rectify the situation and addressed it. And um, Carla, what was that stat you had about people that read, rev see negative reviews if they see a response from the owner? Um, about 45% of people have said that they're more likely to visit a company with negative reviews if the company has responded to those reviews. Yeah, so that definitely a good, good value. And then, like you said before, too, responding to the positive ones is also very good. That'll help your page be more active and will help them um, help the page be more active and then help it rank better as a result. People need to have a Gmail account to add a Google review. Yes, people have to have a Google account to leave a Google review. Um, the good thing is a lot of people have Gmail addresses. So that helps to actually get more reviews. But even people that don't have 
Gmail emails typically have a Google account for some reason I've noticed, like everybody's always signed into Google, even if they don't use Google, Gmail, but that, that, that could be a roadblock for some people if they just don't have a Google account, but it's, it's definitely, you know, worth taking your chances and, and getting that review on Google. Um, if, and if they don't, then trying to get them to review you on Facebook or, or a different platform would be good. All right. So the next question is, does the data from Google My Business show up in Google Analytics? I don't think it does. I think it's in a separate area. Um, there are two different dashboards. I, I don't think I've ever noticed seeing a um, Google Business uh, stats results within Google Analytics. I think if, it, if they click on, it doesn't show up as a source, so that's for sure an acquisition. So if they click on the, um, the Google Business page, it probably just shows up as like a Google uh, Google organic search result. All right, let's see. Carla, can you share the source of the stat for the those stats? Um, yes, I can do it in a minute. I have them linked. But... Okay. And let's see. So we'll have that one coming up. And then, yeah, if somebody has an AOL account, they maybe they have a Gmail account too because their AOL one maybe doesn't, doesn't work very well. But if they have AOL, that's a bad sign. <laughs> All right, so let's keep an eye out for any additional questions. Anybody have a Google business page and feel like it, they're, they've worked with it and um, need to add more? adding FAQs. Yeah, so definitely add frequently asked questions to your um, to your listing. Adding the frequently asked questions will help get more keywords on your listing in addition to just helping people better understand your business. So that's a really good one. Pretty much any area that you can add more information about your service or product is, uh, is a positive thing. Um, so I have the, the sources for those. So the stats about the photos, when I said like businesses with photos receive 42% more requests for driving directions, and 35% more clicks through to their website. That's a stat directly from Google. Um, and then the stat about reviews is from a company called Review Trackers. So they um, track reviews for companies and they do a lot of like data stuff related to that. Great. Yeah, that definitely can't, can't hard to argue with the two stats directly from Google. <laughs> Um, I know personally, too, that if I see negative reviews, but I see um, well written thought out responses to those negative reviews, then, you know, that definitely reassures me that, you know, maybe it wasn't the, the company that was at fault in those situations and they tried to make it right. Um, this one is, uh, what did users search in analytics? I can't seem to see this in analytics. Yeah, so to see the stats of what people searched in, in the um, Google My Business dashboard. So that might be the issue. If you're in analytics, you don't want to be in that area. You want to be in the Google da My Business dashboard. But I just went to uh, right in here to insights on the left. And then that gave me right at the top a list of queries of um, what people are searching. And then I can kind of uh, scan through the pages uh, from there. All right. And even if you don't have a physical address, you can have a Google My Business account. Yes. That's, um, that's fine. All right, so it's hard to show on mine if I were to change it, but I'm just curious, service area. It's hard to go back and show what it would be like if I wanted to make it so like it doesn't show my address in the, the Google search results. Um, but you can do that. You can make it so it's just basically you service people at their address. They've done that many, many times. Okay, so we'll give it another minute or so. If there aren't any other questions, we'll just plan on wrapping it up and um, hopefully uh, shed some light on some additional questions. If you have claimed your listing, we would recommend going in and, and further filling out all the information that you can. Um, and once you do that, the next step would be to create some kind of a ongoing strategy for collecting more and more Google reviews because over time that's going to get more traffic to your page and you're going to get much better results um, when it comes to get the visit visibility of that um, Google Google page.
And one more drone in. Oh, can a PO box be an address? Uh, no, um, a PO box cannot be an address on Google. They do um, have that as part of their part of their um, rules that you can't have a PO box address. I um, I did try to like work around that one time and put out spell out the words post office box, but they they somehow even figured that out, unfortunately. So <laughs> they don't they don't like the PO boxes. All right, so I think that pretty much wraps it up. If there aren't any other questions, I we do have a, 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 robot, a detailed blog post that has all this information in it. And I did record this webinar. So I'm gonna upload that to YouTube, add the recording to the blog post, and then I will be emailing it out to everyone so that you can uh, rewatch it again if need be, or just go through the, the steps and the tips that are in the blog post itself. All right, thanks Carla for, for helping out and thanks everyone for taking the time to, to join us uh, and go through the webinar. Have a great day.